Hey everyone, in this video we're touring a passenger bus that was converted into an amazing tiny living space. This is a retro MCI motor coach that was built in 1975 and it's great to see it having a second life after so many years on the road. Inside there's everything from a full kitchen with a mini oven, a spacious living room with a futon and a dining area, a pellet stove with a real brick surround, a small bathroom with a toilet and tiled shower, and a super cozy bedroom at the back of the bus. We're going to give you a full tour, so let's go check it out. This video is sponsored by Omaze. They're offering the chance to win a beautiful Airstream Caravelle and a 2021 Ford F-150, while also raising money for the Independence Fund, whose goal is to improve the lives of veterans and their families. Stay tuned till the end of the video to get all the details on how to enter. You can also visit omaze.com slash exploringALT to find out more. One of my favorite things about bus conversions is that no matter how much you transform the space in the back of the bus, the front always ends up having that sort of nostalgic feel where you walk up the steps and you see the driver's seat and the steering wheel. So that's always kind of a fun thing to see in a bus conversion. Another great thing is all the windows that you get in a bus. So the front windows here provide a panoramic view. The windows along the driver's side of the bus have all been frosted for privacy and that's just because of the orientation of the bus and all the other windows have been left open to take advantage of this beautiful view. The living space in the bus is about eight feet wide, 38 feet long, and there's about six feet, five inches of headroom in the center of the bus. This is another fun thing to see at the front of the bus is this plaque with all the specs. So the bus was built in 1975 in North Dakota, and then it was actually used as a motor coach in Canada. When you first step up into the living area, there's a futon here and it can fold out into a guest bed. There's a dresser and a small side table for storage. I love the wood ceiling in here. It's all cedar paneling and it really accentuates the curve of the bus roof. And then just along the top of the window line on both sides, there's bookshelves for extra storage. The living room is quite minimalist. There's not as many, you know, chairs and side tables as you would see in other living rooms. I think part of that is they wanted to keep it simple and make sure everyone who was sitting here had a beautiful view of the water. Another reason might be that buses are quite narrow and you don't necessarily want to have furniture on both sides because you want to kind of keep an open walking area through the whole space. One thing that's pretty cool about being on a retired bus is that you can actually open up the emergency windows, which I've always wanted to do. You just flip up this panel, push the window out, and then they have pieces of wood that you can use like this to kind of prop the window open. So that's pretty nice too. You get a nice breeze in here and most of the windows on this side of the bus are operable like that. For heat, there's two small electric baseboards on the bus, one in the living room and one in the bedroom, and they're controlled with a thermostat. And there's also a large pellet stove in the living room, and it has a real bricks around that I love. Obviously, it's great for protecting the walls around it, and it also absorbs a lot of heat, and it also adds a unique and kind of rustic look to the space. This is obviously something you wouldn't really see in a bus that's still on the road because it's really heavy and it could crack while driving. This is the first pellet stove we've used ourselves, but we've learned a lot about them over the years. Um, so they are a really interesting heat source, but they're not for everyone. You do have to buy the pellets and you also need an electrical source to run the hopper and the fan to keep this thing going. Um, but some of the advantages is that you can preload the pellets in this back area here with a lot of pellets. So that sort of eliminates the problem of having your fire going out in the middle of the night and waking up to a cold house. You can also control the temperature pretty well. So on the side here, there's a couple of controls. The top one is for the blower and the lower one is for the temperature. So it's not a thermostat per se. You don't get to choose, you know, an exact temperature, but you can set it and then it'll maintain that temperature automatically as long as you have pellets in here to keep the fire going. And another advantage we've heard is that it's a lot easier to clean up than a regular wood stove. Right across from the pellet stove is the dining area. So this is kind of a floating table here. And obviously the orientation is designed to take advantage of the view. And above it, there's another shelf for storage. I like that they set it up as a floating table. So there's no table legs down below to get in the way. So you can actually move the chairs around freely without bumping into anything. And that's nice when the table's pretty small like this. Now we're in the kitchen and I absolutely love this space. The counters are glossy and it looks like they're coated with resin. The corrugated metal backsplash is pretty unique and it really reminds me of the look of the outside of the bus. 
and there's a brick accent wall at the end that goes around the cooking area and it really ties in nicely with the brick around the pellet stove. This is a tiny kitchen and so naturally all the appliances are pretty small. Right here there's a tiny oven. This might actually just be a toaster oven but it has that kind of classic oven look which is pretty cute. And down below there's a little crate for storage. And they have a few of those throughout the kitchen and I think that's a really neat alternative to just having regular cabinets. Here there's a double sink which I think is so important because you know you can still wash dishes and then have them drying in the other sink. Up here there's an open shelf for all the dishes and glasses here. Another tiny appliance here, there's a freezer and fridge. And this is something I've never seen before, it's a pretty cool cooktop. So there's one burner that's gas and one burner that's an electric induction plate. So that's pretty interesting because it sort of guarantees that you'll always have one or the other. So if your propane tank is empty, you can at least use your electric one and if the power goes out, you can use your propane burner. Across from the kitchen is the bathroom and it's got this sliding barn door with a latch back here which is nice to have so that if your bus isn't level, it's not gonna go flying open or closed on you. And there's also a little hook here for towels. In the bathroom, there's a toilet and a shower stall with real tile. And we haven't seen very many bus conversions with shower stalls this big. And it's got quite a deep pan as well, which is great for preventing water from splashing onto the floor. And at the back of the bus is the bedroom and it's got quite a lot of floor space. You can actually walk all the way around the bed, which is nice. It's a queen size bed and it was built high off the ground so you can store stuff underneath. There's a laundry hamper on one side and a full length mirror. And on the other side there's a wall mounted TV so you can watch movies in bed. And then there's a dresser for more storage below it. Again, the windows on one side of the bus are frosted for privacy and both sides actually have blackout curtains so you get a really good sleep in here. And there's reading lights on both sides of the bed which I always like. A really cool feature of converting a passenger bus like this is that it has those huge storage lockers on the outside where they used to store people's luggage when they were traveling. And so you can actually use those as a garage or kind of a storage shed. So lots of extra storage on the outside. Where this bus is parked, they've built a really nice deck out front. And so you have extra outdoor living space as well. It's fascinating to see a bus like this that's over 45 years old being repurposed into a living space. So even though the engine isn't quite up to snuff for being on the road, the actual shell of the bus is in pretty good shape. And it's a great starting point for building a space. You've already got a roof, walls, windows, and a floor. So all you really need to do is insulate, wire it, and finish the interior. There are challenges to building in a bus like this. The body is metal, and that can create issues with condensation when the temperature is different on the inside and the outside. So that's definitely something to think about. Another issue is that these buses are huge, so if the engine isn't working, they can be tricky to get onto your property and to get into place. And then like any other trailer or tiny home that's on wheels, you get wind going underneath, and so the floor can get quite cold in the winter, so you probably would want to skirt it just like you would a trailer or a tiny house. This bus was converted by a couple in just six weeks, which is pretty impressive. They call it the Souk Ski Bus, and it's permanently parked on Vancouver Island in BC. We'll put a link down below if you want to come check it out. We're also super excited to be collaborating with Omaze on this chance to win an Airstream Caravelle and a 2021 Ford F-150 pickup truck to tow it. This is the perfect setup for road trips, camping, or even just having your own space when you're visiting friends and family. The trailer is a super cozy living space. It's 20 feet long with that classic vintage look on the outside and all the modern amenities you need to be comfortable away from home on the inside. There's a memory foam mattress, a spacious kitchen and dinette, a full bathroom, and even a closet. And once you've set up a home base, you can unhitch the 4x4 truck and go exploring. When you enter for your chance to win, you're also helping raise money for the Independence Fund. They're committed to doing the important work of empowering veterans to overcome physical, mental, and emotional wounds incurred in the line of duty. So to potentially win the Airstream Caravelle and the 2021 Ford F-150, and to support a great cause, go to omaze.com exploringalt. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.